You know, Mobile Melody is all about bringing back that feeling of riding the car with the homies, having in-depth conversations, and listening to dope music. And today, we have a dope artist with us, Mr. Classic Williams. Okay. <laughs> we are up here at the Collab Music Network. I'm gonna ask a few interview questions and you know, vibe a little bit. So, uh, what do you say we do that? Do it. Hey. Yo, man, so it, first of all, it's a pleasure to have you here with us, man. It's a pleasure I'm, to be here, my man. So appreciate you taking time. Now, just like we start every interview, I got asked a question. Mm -hmm. Crowd control. Tell me about a time where you had complete crowd control. Where was it at and how'd you feel with that? Yeah, like my live performances, I'm very energetic. So that's like a big thing for me, like especially the crowd control part, like it's because you want to make sure that people are engaged with the show that you're, you know, putting on. You're there to entertain them. The most crowd control I ever had was actually recently. I did a show with um, Moon Taxi at um, it was it's, uh, at the River Bend River River Bend Festival in Chattanooga, and we did this Rage Against the Machine set, and like I literally like like they kind of briefly introduced me. They're like. And here comes classic, you know? And I came on a stage or whatever, and I was like, I gotta get them involved, you know what I'm saying? So like, I literally was like, what up? You know, like, you know what I mean? And then I was like, I introduced myself. I was like, my name's classic, classic, Williams, Williams. Okay, okay. I do that a lot. <laughs> I say like, okay, and people say, okay, back. And then, you know, you get into it. You got, this is the, the, the showmanship stuff that like and i really picked up a lot of that just from like watching other performers that i admire so that was like the most crowd control that i've ever had like just having them in the palm of my hand like even like when the show was over or when the performance was over like you got the little element of like you know make some noise for you know and everybody was like going crazy and then you just kind of leave how'd that make you feel though to have that that, that control it's great. I mean, I kind of, when I perform, like, I kind of black out. So, like, when I'm in the moment, it's like, it's like everything. It's like kind of like filling up a gauge and then, like, you just kind of, like, let it explode. And, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's exciting, you know? So, I like it. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> now nah, that's perfect, man. Yeah. I can definitely relate to it. And, and, and keeping it talking about performance, and when I'm listening to your music, like, it makes me wonder, like, do you write with the intention of, it, of a performance? Because when I'm listening to some of your music, it sounds like stadium music. Yeah, I don't really write for the intention for it to be, like, I don't know. I think that's just, like, naturally the kind of music that I make. Like, I don't really be thinking about like, oh yeah, when I perform this live, it's gonna go off. Like, I just like, think about like, the song that I'm trying to make, you know, or whatever I'm trying to say, you know? And then a lot of times, just cause like I have energy, like, cause there's, a, there's songs that like, like if you listen to them and then like you actually hear me perform it, the performance is a little bit different than how it sounds like recorded because I put like a little extra element of like sauce on there you know for the performance so i don't really i don't think i really there's some songs i'm like yeah this is gonna go off obviously but like i don't really just go into it with the intention to make stadium or like you know showy kind of songs just come out that way yeah it just kind of comes that way okay okay well then <clears throat> Another thing I notice is just when I listen, I hear a lot of different artists that you possibly could be inspired from. Mm -hmm. But instead of me guessing, I'd rather just ask the man himself, like, who are some of the artists that inspire you? Like, what, what inspires you about them? Here's my top five. And it's like, and this isn't even like, like top five greatest rappers ever. It's just like my personal top five. Um, I would have to say like Jay-Z, Kanye, Pusha T, 
uh, Wiz Khalifa and Kid Cudi in no particular order, really. You know, I can actually hear all of those. Mm -hmm. I can hear every single one of those. Okay, okay. Well then, let's let's piggyback that question. Mm -hmm. Say you stranded on the island. Mm -hmm. You got three albums you can listen to. What are those three albums? That's a good question. Three albums, probably um, Graduation, um, Man on the Moon 2, and probably like uh, Cushion OJ. I was hoping you was gonna say because you know Jay. All right, cool. The thing about your music is, mm -hmm. it's a wide spectrum. Mm -hmm. You know, you can literally, <clears throat> excuse me, you can literally go from snapping off on a synthesizing 808 to a instrument, a live instrument ballad. Yeah. Like, what is the thought process when you're selecting the beats, man? Well, my thing is like, I've always kind of like wanted to just like be like a cheat code. Like, I want to be able to like do these wide variety of styles so like that's kind of always been a part of like my whole thing because like literally like even like with my name it's like anything that i do is a classic because i did it and that's kind of like the cheat code you know what i'm saying so it's like i want and with that it's like i want to be able to do like a rock song i want to be able to do like a pop singing song i want to be able to do like the 808 like the you know like songs like drop top like i can take anybody's style kind of and like just kind of make it my own variation like i recently did uh recorded with my homie young youth i recorded like a um a brooklyn drill song yeah <laughs> like i can do anything like stylistically you know what i'm saying so yeah, like, I think I answered your question. No, no, you definitely did. Yeah. And you gave me a nice little segue, too. You know, with you having the song Drop Top, I had to make sure we had something appropriate to ride in here. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go hit that next location, and I can show you what we got outside, bro. Okay, sounds good. Man, <laughs> yo. Uh. Yo, man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. You actually inspired today's whip, man. After me hearing the song Drop Top, I had to make sure we did this thing appropriate, bro. Absolutely. So tell me, take me through Drop Top. Where did the concept come from and how did you put that together? So it's a funny story. So basically, like, I had my car was in the shop and I had to get a rental car and, um, so basically they gave me like a drop top. It was a Corvette. And I was going through something with the girl that I was dating at the time. Like we weren't talking or something. We were like fighting like we usually did or whatever. And my homegirl Leah was in town and she came over and I was like, let's just go out. So we went out into the, in the drop top and um, we like kind of went downtown and you know, we went around, we ate and shit, and, uh, ooh, what was that? and um, you know, just kind of toured the city. And that's when they kind of like, everything that I was going through, like my, my cousin, DJ Raw Tuna, just sent me a bunch of beats. And I was just in the shower, cause a lot of, a lot of my like, inspiration i don't know like music just comes to me in the shower or whatever i just started i was listening to the beat trying to figure out what i wanted to say and i was like can't shed no tears in the drop top can't cry for me when i'm in the hot ride and that's where that's when it came about so it was like really like you know what i'm saying like it's just about like yeah like me and my girl going through something and like shit sucks right now but really like it's not so bad because like I'm with this attractive girl in a drop top and you know shit's fine you know can't worry about it right now. yeah <laughs> so that's the inspiration behind the song it's like literally like what like everything that happened in the song is what was going on you know you know and then six degrees of separation I did not know that Raw Tunes was your cousin bro yeah that's my cousin yep Wow, good dude. Raw yeah. Tunes is a good dude. That's my, that's my cousin. And I didn't know he did production, so I'm glad you said that. He produced, he DJ. You know, his his brother is DJ Wet. 
What? And yeah, so Wet and Rotun, they're they're brothers. Yeah, that's my that's my that's my older cousin. And you know, they they uh their 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 pops is, is magic and they all like run sensations. Sensations is their club. Yeah, bro. The Williams. The Williams family. I didn't I didn't even put two and two together. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, okay, well, speaking about producers, who are some of the producers, you know, other than those gentlemen that you've worked with around Nashville? Um, Raw Tune, obviously. Uh, my homie Jordan Bartlett is uh, my homie from MTSU. We've, we've done a lot of shit together. Um, my homie Herschel, obviously. Um, he, he recently moved to Arizona, but we still collaborate heavy. We were in a group together also called Unpopular Demand. And um, and lately, just whoever Mimi's just been throwing at me, you know. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Mimi's the goat, man. <laughs> well, look, man, it's starting to come down. So yeah. let's get some of that sushi you were telling yeah, me about. Yeah, let's get some bro. sushi, baby. <laughs> we out. All right, man. So sushi, sushi, sushi. Yeah. And by the way, that is a dope song. By the way, bro. Like I, I, I enjoyed the song and the visual. Like the whole. Eat no. sushi. Exactly. <laughs> so and tell me. You know the rest. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. <laughs> tell me this, man. Like, what? Number one, where did the idea for sushi come from? Other and and how was the process of creating that video? You had to travel for the video. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um. So obviously, like, I love Japanese culture. I love the food. I love the music. I love anime and all that. And uh, I wanted to make a video that kind of encapsulated that. And just like, I was in my early 20s when I made that and I was living a wild life. So <laughs> what happened was I shot the music video with uh, gems on cassette. And yeah, I shot, them, I shot it around here in Nashville. And then uh, the raw footage that we had had from that, I actually tweeted it out to this account on Twitter uh, called Asian Model Palooza Fest. They were throwing this event in Los Angeles. And the dude who was running the festival loved the song and, the, and like the video that we had shot so much. He was like, come reshoot it in LA. We'll fly you out to LA to reshoot it with a bunch of Asian porn stars and, yeah. and strippers. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> so he flew me and my friend, uh, he flew me, Amari, uh, B. Clark and Morgan, we all flew out to um, we all flew out to Los Angeles, and we were at the um, Deja Vu in downtown Los Angeles, and um, we met at, we, we hooked up with my homie uh, Alante. Shout out to my homie Alante, and he like helped film that portion of us just in the strip club with all these, and like one of them was named Kite Kawasaki. Shout out to Kite. Um, she worked at the Bunny Ranch and she had like introduced me to like Dennis Hoff, the dude who worked at the Bunny Ranch, and Ron Jeremy before all the allegations. Right. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we shot the video there and it was awesome. It was like one of the best times of my life. I mean, it actually looked that way too, bro. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry. So we're gonna do a word association, man. Just mm -hmm. have to say a few words. Just tell me the first thing come to mind. <laughs> Obviously, sushi. Repeat. <laughs> I love it. Music. Life. Love. Infinite. Loyalty. Always. Nashville. Home. Fuck with it. Fuck with it. Now, you've been able to move around a lot with your career. Um, and I know one of the things that you did, what you got an opportunity to do, was you got to open up for the legend KRS-One. Yeah. Bro, that is not something that everybody can say that they had an opportunity to do. So yeah. what was that experience like? It was dope, man. Um, Shouts to Capo. You brought him down. He hollered at me about the opportunities. Like, you want to do it? I was like, sure. And uh, I liked the uh, the crowd that, that day. It was like super like, old school, but like also like there was a lot of like new hip hop fans there too. And yeah, like he was super nice. Uh, we ended up like freestyling on stage together. 
It was dope. It was a good time. I, I did Black Lives that night. I like, made everybody put their um, camera light, uh, camera phones up in the air and shit. They were like waving them and the shit. Got that on footage. Yeah, we, yep. Juan was there. <laughs> Autofocus Films. They were on the job. And uh, yeah, it was great. It was a good night. So I, I saw a little a little bit of footage from the freestyle portion of the show. Mm -hmm. It kind of looked like you blacked out a little bit, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to do that. Like every time I go on stage, it's like, it just kind of like takes over me. And I just kind of like get in that zone, you know what I mean? Like yeah. getting that feeling. And it's like, that's what, that's what it should be about. It should be about, you know, if you're not having fun, then they, like, it, it's not as authentic. Yeah. Like, you gotta have fun with it too, you know what I mean? The crowd can tell. Wow. You gotta try one of these, by the way. Yeah. You can put let your one of these. Yes. Let me say, you for last, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it sounds like you've been able to move around a lot, like I said before, so, that also includes you being around different circles, different people. Yeah. How important is it for an artist, let alone an indie artist, to be able to navigate within different circles? Mm. I'm one of those people like, I kind of have like my core really good friends that I hang around and we like really like have been banging out and doing music and stuff for a long time. But recently like, I've been working with like different people and just kind of going outside of my comfort zone and like making new stuff or whatever, especially like with like Mimi and collab uh, for like placement opportunities. But I mean, it's just kind of weird because like I like it's like a lot of people know who I am and shit. So like I go out places and they already kind of know. So it's like. And that's just from like me in my younger days, like just really like going hard and like being in everyone's space with it. Yeah, so it's like, you gotta go through that phase of like, like I would rap anywhere. Like I would rap on, like I rapped in a restaurant. They literally like, <laughs> like I would do open mics. I would like stand on top of tables. I would do dangerous stunts and shit. Like anywhere, you know? And like, it's funny now cause like, People will be like, yo, yeah, like, I don't really know Classic, but like, I, I think I saw him rap at like some house party or something like, yeah. Yeah. like that shit happens all the time. And it's just cause like, you gotta be able to like stand out and shit, you know? Yeah, that is one of the important things as far as being an artist, man. Mm -hmm. So I know this is gonna seem like a, just a general question, man, but who is Classic Williams, bro? An individual, a creative, Lover of sushi and, you know, tequila shots. And um, also just a genuinely, you know, I feel like I'm a genuinely good person, you know? Yeah, it's, and that's, to me, that's an important, that's important to be that way because you'll meet a lot of artists who think really, really highly of themselves. And not that you shouldn't, but it just comes off as rude, arrogant, you know what I mean? And it's just always good to meet people who do what you do and they do it up. Oh, no, no, we're good, thank you. It's just always good to meet people who do what you do and they're not assholes, man. Yeah. So I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> no doubt. Man, <clears throat> excuse me. So what you got coming up here in the near future, bro? Well, I just got back from Mexico and uh, just got engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, shouts to my beautiful fiance, Liz. And um, I am just gonna be focusing on like, I got a bunch of different songs that I wanna put out like as singles and stuff and just kinda like figuring out what my next plan is, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, I'm always doing stuff for the placements. I'm always doing like, always making songs every week. So we, we gotta, we gotta, we're gonna link back up. I think in the next, now that I'm back from vacation in the next week or two to like, you know, because they're really starting to rev up on pitching and, and do all that stuff. So I've been focused on that a lot. But I think I'm going to, like, gear some, some of my focus towards, um, you know, just, like, putting putting out stuff, putting out dub stuff. I'm definitely working on some T-shirts. So so new T-shirts coming soon is probably, like, the, the very next thing that's going to happen. 
So be on the lookout for that. And new music always, new music coming soon, for sure. Let everybody know where they can find you at, bro. You can find me on Instagram, at Classic Williams. You can find me on ClassicWilliams.com. Twitter, at Actual Rapper. Facebook, Classic Williams. On Spotify, Classic Williams. Apple Music, Classic Williams. All the streaming services, Classic Williams. And be sure to check out that ClassicWilliams.com, like you said, that website is pretty dope. Man. Well, I am Mr. Adams, by the way. This is Mobile Melody, and this is a what? This is a Tuna Lover Roll. Tuna Lover Roll. We're gonna give it a yep. shout on the way out. Peace. Happy Mushroom. Yeah. Happy Mushroom.